Here we are on the couch with Steve August. Steve, you're a physiotherapist from Dunedin. Yes. And you've been here doing some lectures on what? Uh, I've been giving two two-hour lectures to the uh, medical conference on practical management of low backs, uh, upper backs, necks, sacroiliacs, coccydinia, and failed back surgery. So anything to do with spines. Right. Um, now, I, I imagine that. I mean. All GPs are dealing with, with these types of things every day. Yeah. Uh, um, do GPs know much about... Um... No, and it's not their fault. Um, GPs have to know about that much. I get to spend 30 years working on that little bit, so yeah. I get quite good at it. Yes. And uh, a friend of mine who's a GP in uh, Dunedin did an impromptu survey. 40% of her week's consultations had a musculoskeletal question. Um, GPs do not get taught 40% of their course um, is not musculoskeletal. Mm -hmm. So they really want to know sensible, grounded, practical stuff that works with backs and necks, and they get taught very little. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's why they've invited me to the conference here. Mm -hmm. So what are the most common issues that people are facing? Right. The one I'd like to talk about is the commonest upper spinal problem in the Western world. It is basically a hunched upper back driving most neck pain and headache. Mm -hmm. The stats are jaw dropping. Uh, one in six adults as we talk this second will have acute pain in the upper back or neck or headaches coming from the neck. It's that big and it's going up. The driver is almost certainly laptops, tablets and smartphones. The reason is that you cannot, repeat cannot, set them up ergonomically correctly. You have to hunch more to use them. The fact of the hunching then drives most, back, uh, most uh, neck pains through absolutely bog standard simple physiological loading reasons. So muscles being stretched? It's a combination but it's a very logical and simple combination. Once you start hunching just to lift the head up uh, you have to use the muscles along the back of your neck to hold the head up round about five or six times more than normal. This is all recent research. Your head normally weighs about 5.5 kilos. Uh, the effect of loading when you're working uh, with 60 degrees of flexion using a smartphone is 27.2 kilos of load on your neck. So it's five or six times more normal load. So what happens is that the muscles around the back of the neck get really strong, but they also do micro tearing. You get ordinary inflammatory response repair of micro, te uh, micro tearing, micro trauma, um, and you get adhesive fibrosis laid down as part of the repair process. So you do that for eight hours a day, day after day after day, and you're building up, uh, essentially call it tissue scarring, adhesive fibrosis in the muscles along the back of the neck. Um, so um, tissue scarring is non-elastic. So you have a shortened, scarred, strong patch of muscles along the back of the neck. At the same time, the second factor is that the muscles around the front, the longus coli, which normally keep your chin in, um, basically go into holiday mode because the ones on the back are doing the work. So the chin pokes out. As soon as you're doing that, you've compressed every single facet hinge in the cervical spine. So of course, some of them are going to lock acutely, which is when they come to see me or the chiropractor and the, the neck can't move, wry neck. Um, you've also closed down all the intervertebral foramina. So if you've already got osteophytes there or it's an older patient, you can get nerve root referral just because you're doing that. So the whole thing is an absolutely consecutive, easy to follow chain of events, um, starting from the hunch and culminating in most neck problems that walk through the door. Mm -hmm. So you're buggered really, aren't you? Ha! Well, the, the cheering thing is, because you can analyse it out really clearly and really logically, you can build a, a program to oppose each of those components mm -hmm. and it works really well. There's a bit of a search for what is the answer to a neck problem or what is the answer to a, a low back problem. Mm -hmm. It's a nonsense question. It's like saying what is the answer to abdominal pain. Mm -hmm. There isn't a single answer to that. Basically there are a number of things that go on. So when you break it down to, to these components with the upper spine, um, you can actually make sense of it. Mm -hmm. So we've done this and there's a free resource for everyone. Um, if you go to www.bodystance.co.nz that's B-O-D-Y-S-T-A-N-C-E dot co dot N-Z. Now that's running on underneath us right now? Oh great, okay. Yeah. Or just Google the word back pod. Yes. So like an iPod, uh, only it's a back pod. Yes. Um, this is a website that we've set up. It's free for everyone. Uh, we've got seven videos on it with me looking like a rabbit in the headlights explaining exactly what goes on and what you do to counter each of those components. Mm -hmm. So we've got a strengthening exercise for the longest coli, the deep neck flexors. We've got a strengthening exercise for the muscles between the shoulder blades so you can hold your head back. Mm -hmm. We've also got home massage. 
because the muscles along the back of the neck get really scarred and massage is the best delivery technique for easing that off. This is all stuff they can do at home ongoing mm -hmm. um, and also explaining about posture mm -hmm. which is very simple. It's shoulders back and down for the upper back and chin in for the neck. Mm -hmm. So they've got the tools to look after their own neck and upper spine at home. The last component is the hunch itself mm -hmm. and that can get so tight that you need manipulation to unlock it. The trouble with manipulation is it's a great way of banging hinges free, uh, like chiropractors do frequently, but you get that chiropractic cliche of um, every few weeks going back to That's have them right. click yes. free again. Yeah. Um, so it's like hitting a rusty hinge with a hammer. It breaks the rust seal and you can free up the bones. Great. What it does not do is stretch the tightened collagen around those bones. So if you've got a chronic hunch, and this is becoming the norm, um, the anterior longitudinal ligament has shortened, the joint capsules have tightened around the mobile joints, the whole thing is being reinforced in that hunch. Sure you can unlock the hinges, but you only get a temporary answer. What we did was build um, in Dunedin um, a, a product called the Backpod, which is shaped a bit like a, a, a high-tech cushion power. So the patient could lie back. Have you got on. one now? I have. Yes. So um, this is the Backpod. Um, We've been winning international awards for it uh, through Germany, through New Zealand. Uh, it's probably the most useful thing in the world, and I'm not exaggerating, for stretching out a tight thoracic spine. So it's an unyielding polycarbonate core with a cushioned outer. Uh, looks a little bit like a power. Basically, you lie back on it, and it uses your, the patient's own upper body weight as the force uh, to stretch out the, the tight collagen so you can actually get a permanent um, freeing up of the thoracic spine. It's, it's the component you can't do yourself. Nobody has the leverage uh, on their own. You have to use an external force to stretch this stuff. But so we find these are great. Uh, put it between the shoulder blades and lie yep. back? Put it between the shoulder blades and lie back down on it. Yes. Um, it's on our website as well, yeah. and EBOS has them. They normally sell through most pharmacies for about $70 or $80. Right. But we genuinely think it's probably the most useful thing for anything for the upper spine. Right. So, so it's used regularly, how, how often would you use it? Well, it's very much like stretching a hamstring. If you do a stretch for one minute on a hamstring, it'll feel nice and free afterwards. Do that most days a week for a few weeks and you're getting towards a permanent improvement. Yeah. Same with this. Um, so you use it for about five or six minutes, moving it around up and down the, the middle back. All it is, is providing enough leverage to actually stretch out the tight stuff which is otherwise keeping you hunched, mm -hmm. which is then driving most of the neck problems. It's bog standard logical. I imagine just laying on the floor with that would be quite painful. Um, the one bit of negative feedback we've had, and it's the only bit, we've sold about 9,000 so far in New Zealand, um, is that if you bang straight onto it and your spine's too curved and too tight, um, it will feel sore because it's requiring the spine to, to stretch backwards. All you have to do is use enough pillows under the head, uh -huh. and if it's really tight, just a couple of layers of fluffy tail over the back body. Yes. So it's just a bit uncomfortable to start with. Yes. It's a real treatment device, not a gimmick, yes. so it has to be a bit uncomfortable or it wouldn't be doing anything. Yes. But that eases off in a minute as things stretch. And at that point, you've got, really got the patient on, um, on your side. Right. What we're finding is that um, for a lot of patients, it's all they need. Definitely some patients, they also need hands-on physio, osteopathy, chiropractic, for specific unlocking, specific um, tailored treatment. But this gives them the framework to stretch out everything else and strengthen the muscles and basically um, do all the long-term ongoing things that they have to do at home to have the spine work properly. Uh, we've been getting extraordinarily good results. Mm -hmm. the, the other one I should mention is that there are two things we didn't think of. Um, asthmatics, if the, especially childhood asthmatics are growing, hunched over, sucking in air, um, you can also use this thing on the costovertebral hinges. So you shift it out about 50 mils from the centre line of the spine onto the curve of the ribs, and it's actually doing an active stretch on tightened costovertebral joints. Now, with asthma, these are, these are frequently chronically tight and flexed a bit. Um, you cannot, regardless of the state of the lungs, you can't fill them fully if you can't expand the ribcage fully, and you can't expand the ribcage fully if you can't move the hinges fully. And we do think this is pretty much the only device in the world that allows home treatment of costovertebral ribs. The last comment was that for scoliosis, I think it's almost treatment of choice. Um, because with scoliosis, you've got a thoracic twist 
So the ribs on that side are raised on the side uh, on, of the direction of the twist. Now, if you shift the back pod 50 mil out from the center of the spine and they lie and put it on the curve of the ribs and they lie back on that, you're opposing the direction of the twist. Oh, oh, oh so it's on the, oh, the opposing side of the twist, okay, yeah? Yeah, so, it, you, so you're putting it on the painful side, yes. uh, which is also the side that the ribs are raised on, yes. because the spine is twisted to that side, so it's raised the curve of the ribs on that same side. Um, so it's ipsilateral pain, put this on that side, and it's then actively opposing the direction of the scoliotic, scoliotic twist. Now, I'm not for a moment saying that we're going to straighten everybody up, but it's absolutely logical treatment direction mm -hmm. to try and oppose the way in which things are continuing to get tighter. And we've been just getting extraordinarily good results. Mm. And it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> Steve, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, and uh, good luck with the uh, backboard. You're very welcome. Thank you very much.